One day, the curious dwarf and the grumpy dwarf were digging in the mine. The curious dwarf was working hastily as usual. Grumpy, on the other hand, was very uncomfortable with Curious's messy work. Hey, can you slow down a bit? Oh, look, look! Do you see? What's that glowing there? The Curious Dwarf dug with his shovel and brought out a small crimson stone. And the Grumpy Dwarf began to cough in the dust. <laughs> look what you've done! Ah! <sighs> Your curiosity causes trouble every time! Ah! This stone? What is this stone for? I don't know and I don't want to know either! Ah! <clears throat> I wish I'd never come to the mine with you! Curious was very upset by what Grumpy had said. He took the red stone and left the mine. On the other hand, the evil queen, Hela, noticed red lights coming out of the globe in her cave. When she went to look at it, she saw the stone in the curious dwarf's hand. Huh? A power stone! I cannot believe my eyes! What? What'd you say, ma'am? Get ready, Dunkov! We're going to get to what's mine! <laughs> The curious dwarf noticed smoke coming out of his pocket as he made his way through the forest. As soon as he put his hand in his pocket and touched the stone, he was so hurt... Ouch! Ow! Ah! I have a burn! Ow! ...that he threw the stone from his hand because the stone was too hot for Curious to hold. At that moment, evil Hela appeared next to the stone and she took the warm stone in her hand with great composure. You took the trouble to bring this precious stone to me? <laughs> but, 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 that stone is mine. I found it. It's mine now. Oh, this is a powerful stone and can only be held by a strong person. It means nothing to a weak and frail dwarf like you. <laughs> Hella suddenly disappeared with the power stone in her hand, and the curious dwarf went to Snow White in fear. Snow White was very surprised to see the dwarf in a hurry. Calm down, please, curious. Tell me one by one what happened. Today I found a power stone in the mine, and Hella came and took it from me. She can do a lot of evil with the stone very soon, my princess. I'm so sorry. Of course, we'll find a way to stop her. Curious, come with me. At that time, Hela and her assistant, Dunkov, were chasing evil plans in the dark cave. Amarta Norta Norta Morta! As soon as Dunkov read the spell, sparks came out of the power stone and surrounded Dunkov. Ow! I burned! I burned! Ouch! Ouch! Morta, torta, zorta, corta! Help me, my queen! Get out of here, you incompetent! You can't read anything properly! Amarto norsa, azaro nosta! The moment Hela read the spell, a crimson light was reflected in the cave. Because the evil queen has created a huge volcano a little far away. You did it, my queen! You are such a good wizard! Now let's throw the dwarves and the princess one by one into the volcano! <laughs> oh, it's almost time for me to become the most beautiful woman in the world, Dunkov! No one will be able to surpass my beauty anymore! Meanwhile, Snow White and the curious dwarf, who were climbing the mountain, finally reached Hela's cave. As soon as they saw the red stone floating in the air in front of them, Hela appeared right behind them. I've been waiting for you two. Where are the other six dwarves? I will need them too. <laughs> Aren't you tired of doing evil, Hela? You cannot harm us. Hela raised her hands and called out to the cave snakes. My servants, come 
and embrace these guests. Ha! <laughs> Cave snakes that appeared out of nowhere surrounded Snow White and the curious dwarf. Ah! Uh, help! My arms! I can't move! <sighs> Hella! Tell your snakes to let us go now! <sighs> they hurt us! With the magic of the Power Stone, Hela sent Snow White and the Curious Dwarf to the erupting Volcano Mountain. Meanwhile, Grumpy, who could not find the Curious Dwarf anywhere, went to the Ace Dwarf. Ace, I did something very bad. I hurt Curious with my words. I looked everywhere for him to apologize, but I couldn't find him. Grumpy, you know, we have to be very careful what we say when we are angry. I am very sorry. I will never say bad words again. Maybe he went to Snow White's palace. Let's go check. Snow White and the Curious Dwarf were terrified when they looked at the hot lava slowly approaching from the volcano. Thanks to this power stone, soon you and your beauty will disappear from this world, Snow White. Even if I disappear, the evil in your heart will always remain there, Hela. You'll never experience beauty with that darkened heart of evil. Come on, my servants. Carry the guests into the lava. Ha 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 ha. Hela has given orders to the cave snakes. Just when the snakes were about to throw Snow White and the dwarf into the lava, Dunkov got afraid of the sparks coming towards him and fell towards Hela. Hela's power stone also rolled towards Snow White. The princess has barely picked up the power stone. Thanks to this, the color of the stone suddenly changed from red to green. Oh no! My power stone! With the power of the stone turning green, the snakes glided over the princess and the curious dwarf. Snow White caught Hela with the light coming out of the power stone and imprisoned her power in the stone. Hela tried to cast magic with her hands without realizing what was happening, but she had no power anymore. Oh! My powers! You destroyed them! No way! I can't do anything like that! The important thing is to be happy and live with the beauties of life, even without the powers. Hela, don't forget that. Snow White used the green power stone to calm the lava overflowing from the volcano. Later, they returned to the palace with the curious dwarf. The other dwarves, who welcomed them with great joy, were also very happy. On the other hand, the evil queen Hala could never understand that she will get the right results when she uses a power only for good, not for evil. In the Eastlands, far, far away, there was a poor but kind-hearted young boy named Aladdin. This young man would do anything to help his lovely mother. And in the magnificent palace of the country, the Sultan had a beautiful daughter. Her name was Jasmine. Jasmine was in abundance, but very lonely. So much so that her only friend in the palace was a tiny colorful hummingbird named Rin. Sometimes Jasmine was covering her face with a veil and going to the market. Thus, she was walking among the people and forgetting her loneliness for a moment. One day, Aladdin set out to work with a shovel in his hand. On the way, he saw a man standing by the well. Hey, boy! Can you help me? Yes, of course, sir. Whatever I can. Do you see this gold in my hand? If you do what I tell you, so much more can be yours. Aladdin agreed to help the man. I dropped something in the well. I'm going to swing a rope down, and I want you to pick it up and bring it back to me. 
Aladdin looked into the well. It was a dark well with no bottom visible. Even though he was very afraid, he went down by holding on to the rope for the gold the man had promised. When he reached the bottom of the well, he took a match from his pocket and lit it. At that moment, he saw that the black well was shining with sparkling jewels. Boy, there is an old lamp there. Just take it and come. Aladdin found the old lamp the man was talking about, but he didn't understand why the man wanted to take this shabby lamp out of all the gold and jewelry. Then he grabbed onto the rope and barely started climbing up. Let me hold the lamp so you can come out more easily. As soon as Aladdin gave the lamp in his hand, the man let go of the rope in his hand. Oh no! Aladdin caught the end of the lamp in panic. Let go of my lamp! Let go! No way! No! I can't let go! I'll fall! While the man was trying to save his lamp, Aladdin and lamp together fell to the bottom of the well with a great noise. No! My lamp! My lamp! Although Aladdin tried to get out of the well when he regained consciousness, he could not succeed. He waited for days for someone to help him. But no one passed by. Aladdin was helpless. He lit a match and looked around in fear. Then he saw a ring on the ground. When he put the ring on his finger, the lights surrounded him. The owner of the ring is my master. You have only three wishes. Say whatever you want from me. I want to get out of this well now. The giant fulfilled Aladdin's wish. Aladdin ran home with the lamp in his hand. Just then, he collided with Jasmine, who was wandering around the market. When Jasmine's veil was opened, Aladdin did not know what to say in the face of the beauty he saw. Oh, excuse me. I'm in a hurry. I'm sorry. Aladdin walked away without knowing who she was. But Jasmine, who was looking behind him, fell in love with Aladdin at first sight. Arriving at home out of breath, Aladdin told his mother everything that had happened, and his mother wanted to clean this useless lamp and sell it. But while she was wiping the top of the lamp, smoke suddenly covered everything, and a genie appeared out of the smoke. I was in that lamp for so long. Since you saved me, ask whatever you want from me. Aladdin and his mother looked at each other bewilderedly. I want a wonderful table flowing with milk and honey. Suddenly, a perfect table with all kinds of food appeared in front of them. Within a few months, Aladdin and his mother became very rich thanks to the genie. All this time, Aladdin's mind was on that beautiful girl he had collided with in the market. On the other hand, the Sultan learned that his daughter Jasmine was secretly going to the market and imprisoned her in her room. Jasmine, on the other hand, spent her days in the room dreaming of Aladdin. After a while, the Sultan learned of Aladdin's wealth. The Sultan summoned him to the palace to find out the reason for this wealth. Your Majesty, your request is a command to me. I heard that you have a legendary wealth. I ask you for a magnificent palace and 40 soldiers with their hands full of gold. Let's see if you're as rich as they say. While leaving the palace with thoughts, Aladdin met eyes with Jasmine and realized that this beautiful princess was the girl he had collided with in the market. He immediately went away to make a wish to the genie. Sirin, 
It was him. He was the boy I met at the market. Jasmine ran and begged on bended knee. My sultan, my father, I fell in love with this man. I want to marry him and live happily ever after. Wait for a while. My wishes haven't been fulfilled yet. Aladdin excitedly told the sultan's wishes to the genie. The genie snapped his fingers and a huge palace, 40 soldiers, and a chest of gold appeared in front of them. Thank you so much! That way, maybe I can marry Jasmine. The next day, Aladdin arrived at the palace with 40 soldiers behind him. When the Sultan saw the soldiers and the gifts in front of them, he was very impressed by this wealth. And he told Aladdin that he could marry his daughter. The next week, Aladdin and Jasmine got married with a magnificent wedding. One day, when Aladdin was not at home, a salesman came to the palace. I pick your waist! I'm a waist picker! Waist picker! Hearing this, Jasmine threw the old lamp in the house to the salesman through the window. But this salesman was the evil man who left Aladdin in the well. As soon as he took the lamp, he stroked it and asked the genie to carry the palace far away with the princess. The genie did what the man wanted. When Aladdin returned, he saw that the palace and the princess were not in their place. My princess! My palace! Where did they disappear? Where are you? Aladdin thought of the ring he found in the well. He immediately put the ring on his finger. And at that moment, the surrounding was covered with lights and a giant appeared in the middle. What is your request from me? You only have two wishes left. Aladdin wished to go to Jasmine. The giant clapped his hands and Aladdin found himself on a flying carpet. The carpet will take you to Jasmine. Indeed, the flying carpet took him to his palace in the middle of the desert. Aladdin got off the carpet and hid somewhere. And he saw that Jasmine was serving the bad guy and the lamp was in the man's lap. Aladdin put the ring on his finger again and made his last wish. I want you to turn this villain into a bird, giant. The giant fulfilled this wish and the man immediately turned into a bird. Aladdin rushed to Jasmine right away and hugged her. Aladdin took the old lamp in his hand and stroked it and asked the genie to move the palace to the old place. Of course, my lord! The palace returned to its former place by flying in the sky. While Aladdin and Jasmine were dancing, thinking that their happiness would last forever, the lamp fell on the ground. They were not yet aware that the genie had slipped away from the cracked edge of the lamp. There was a magnificent sea kingdom in the middle of a vast ocean. The youngest princess of this kingdom, the mermaid Araya, was very excited to go on an ocean trip that day. Daddy, we haven't been on an ocean trip together in a long time. Would you like to come with me? Today, I'm going to build a shelter for the fish families from sinking ships, my beautiful daughter. I might join you on the next trip. Then I'll come back to help you when I get back. The Little Mermaid swam into the depths of the ocean. A frightful school of fish and a family of turtles passed by. Hey! What's going on? What are you running from? Run, mermaid, run! A huge gate draws everyone in! 
The mermaid created a bubble shield for herself and swam quickly towards the mysterious gate. She was very surprised to find that there was indeed a closed gate in the depths of the ocean. When she got a little closer, the gate suddenly opened and a big vortex engulfed the mermaid Araya. Araya found herself in a completely different ocean. The fish and corals here were colorless and the water was turbid and dirty. When Araya looked back in surprise, the vortex was closed and the mysterious gate was gone. She noticed the starfish at the bottom of the cliffs as she hurried around. Hello, starfish? Oh, I think I'm lost. Can you help me? What? What for a thing, Seeing a sea person for the first time in their lives, the starfish hid under rocks in fear. The mermaid, on the other hand, did not understand why the stars were running away from her because they were speaking in a language she did not know. Meanwhile, she saw a pale and tired lobster approaching her. Hey, lobster, I think I'm lost. Can you help me? Cosa? Scusa, ma non ti capisco. E non capisco neanche se sei un essere umano o un pesce. Oh, Oh, uh, no. I don't speak the same language as you, a little fish. How are we going to understand each other? The little mermaid Araya tried to ask for help using her hands, but the lobster was afraid of these movements and immediately ran away from there. Just when the little mermaid decided to swim to the land, she saw a blowfish in the distance. She swam to him quickly and asked for help. Please, please help me, blowfish. I'm lost and I can't go back. Oh, eres una persona del mar? Ah, uh, I can't understand what you're saying. But I won't hurt you, don't worry. When the mermaid Araya gave her hand to the blowfish, the blowfish panicked for a moment and inflated his poisonous fin, and his fin touched the little mermaid. The little mermaid fell weak on the spot and sank to the bottom of the water with her eyes closed. Time has flown. Poseidon, the underwater king, was looking for his daughter Araya, who had not returned to the kingdom for hours. Keep searching the ocean! When the little mermaid regained consciousness, she opened her eyes in the house of an old jellyfish. The old jellyfish was waiting beside Araya. You have finally come to life! Ah, oh, finally a creature I speak the same language with! Oh, thank you for saving me! The jellyfish told Araya that she also had accidentally come to this side of the ocean years ago and then could never return. That's why I learned every language here. But my power is not enough to make this place beautiful, mermaid. Oh, I have a solution in mind, but uh, we have to find the mysterious gate first. Mermaid Araya and the old jellyfish swam together to the far reaches of the ocean. Then the old jellyfish whistled loudly. <whistles> Suddenly, a lot of squid pupils gathered around her. The jellyfish asked them to release their ink at the same time. The mysterious gate, which was transparent the moment the fish released their ink, suddenly became visible. But no matter how hard they pushed, the gate didn't open. Therefore, the Little Mermaid created a hammer from water bubbles and hit the gate with great force. Thus, as the gate opened, they found themselves in the other ocean. Together, they swam to the Sea Kingdom. Araya told her father Poseidon, one by one, how unclean and neglected that completely different world she saw was. The thing to do is clear. We will clean that water as soon as possible and we will provide a nice habitat for the fish. 
Together, they swam to the place where the mysterious gate was located. Poseidon raised his hand and created such great waves that the mysterious gate appeared for a moment and then shattered. Thus, the two oceans came together. The waters became clean and the sea creatures were very happy. In the meantime, Poseidon, realizing that the fish had difficulty in understanding each other's languages, turned a sunken ship into a school. Thus, all the fish would have been able to learn each other's languages. No me envenenarás más, ¿verdad, pequeña burbuja? I won't hurt you again, mermaid. I'm sorry. After Poseidon cleaned the waters, all the fish joined hands to beautify this new world where they learned each other's languages. Because every new language always opens the gates of a new world. Here's my home, deep blue sea. Everything is fun, friends with me. The king called me. The Little Mermaid The very best daughter Of the King of the Sea Just look around You will see the joy A beautiful life And the ocean roar Just look around You will see the joy A beautiful life And the ocean roar One day, the kind-hearted Mother Holly went down to water the flowers in the garden. At that time, she saw three corpulent hunters looking towards her house. Mother Holly went to them curiously. Hey, strangers! What are you doing in my garden? This garden and house are inside our hunting grounds. That's why you need to vacate your house immediately. We'll demolish your house and build a hunting lodge here. Oh, but how is that possible? I've been living in this house for years. Don't make it difficult, old lady. If you don't leave the house right away, we'll knock the house down while you're asleep at night. <laughs> The hunters walked towards the house laughing. Mother Holly tried to stop them, but failed. The hunters started to destroy the doors and windows with their axes. Mother Holly hurried to the flower garden deep in the forest, and she loudly called for help. Help me! Can't anyone hear me? Just then, Emily, Emily paid attention to the voice coming from the well. Huh? Mother Holly, is that you? What's going on? Emily, oh, you need to come right away. I need your help. Emily left her cross stitch and holding on to the rope, went down the well. Mother Holly was so happy to see her. Oh, this morning, three hunters came and started tearing down my house. They're gonna make it a hunting lodge. Oh, but you've been living there for years. They can never do that. Hmm. Oh, I have an idea. Come on, we'll save your house from the hunters. While the hunters were tearing down the inside of the house, a black shadow passed through the window. Hey, did you see this? What was that? Maybe a bear? They panicked a little when the same shadow passed through the window a second time. Huh? It passed again! This must be a bear for sure! The hunters took their arrows and stormed out. But they saw not a bear, but an ugly old witch. Oh, hunters! This house is full of ghosts and fairies! Get out of here now! Now! 
The hunters didn't realize that the ugly witch was actually Mother Holly. <laughs> There's no such thing as a ghost, old witch. <laughs> if you don't believe me, disaster will happen to you. I'm the oldest witch of this forest. Whatever Mother Holly told the hunters, she could not convince them. The hunters continued to break into the house and destroy it. Mother Holly told Emily that she had failed to deceive the hunters. But Emily had another idea. A frightening sound started to reverberate in the house as the three burly hunters were throwing out the items inside the house one by one. were terrified of the sound. While they were looking around in a hurry, the vase on the table fell with a bang. Huh? How did that vase fall? You dropped it. No, I didn't. He did. No, you must have hit your foot. Stop making that creepy noise. I'm not making that noise. What are you talking about? It's not us. While the hunters were arguing among themselves, the books started to fall to the ground by themselves. The hunters could not stand the fear and threw themselves out. And Emily stuck her head out from behind the seat she was hiding in and laughed softly. Turns out it was Emily herself who frightened the hunters with her voice and dropped the items with a transparent rope. Gentlemen, that old witch confused us. Let's get on with our work. When the hunters entered, they saw a ghost with huge black eyes right in front of them. <coughs> hunters have run away from home, their feet entangled, never to return. Turns out, what they thought was a ghost was Mother Holly herself. The hunters ran so fast that they finally lost their way. Meanwhile, they met a young girl in the forest. Hey, young girl, don't go that way! There's a house full of ghosts there! I think the ghost cursed us! And we lost our way! Oh no! Oh, that's too bad! Then get this key! A golden gate will appear in front of you! Run away from there! The hunters left with the key they took. But they didn't know that this young girl was Emily, who scared them. A little further on, a golden gate appeared before the hunters. The disguise of each hunter who passed through the gate was changed. Their axes and arrows vanished. I will no longer hunt. All animals will be my friends. I'll always respect nature, protect trees, and all plants. I will never, ever harm anyone's house or property. All three hunters turned into good-hearted gentlemen and left. On the other hand, Emily happily returned to Mother Holly. <laughs> See, Mother Holly? We knew we'd get your house back! <laughs> yes! The hunters did not hunt us! We hunted them! But Mother Holly's house was in shambles and ruins. Together, they decided to repair and restore the house. However, for this, they had to ask Emma for help. But Emma, she doesn't like to work at all! Emily went to the flower garden and called Emma. When Emma learned that Mother Holly needed help, she happily agreed to come over. They helped each other for days and repaired the house and cleaned everything. In the evening, they sat around a table full of delicious food and talked about the importance of female solidarity. 
Because when women help each other, it is much easier to solve every problem.